When we look at the Bible and we start looking at the three heavens, and there are three heavens, there's a first, second, third heaven, the Bible goes into a little bit of detail about them, it's some interesting points that come out about it. And so let's go ahead and jump into it. The first time that we even see the word heaven or heavens, which is important, is in the beginning. In the beginning, the Bible says that God, that God created the heavens and the earth. Well, the word for heavens is the word Hashamayim, which is the ha shamaim. Shamaim is the word for heavens. It is derived from the word water, which is Mayim. So Mayim, water, Shamaim, heavens. And of course, these are both poor words. And so it indicates that there are at least three. Why do I say that? Because in Hebrew, there are three ways to number. One, the singular. Second, the dual. Those two are self-explanatory. The third one is the plural, where you have the im sound, the yad mim, where you have a plurality, three or more. And so in this case, we have the word shamaim or, or hashamaim, which is the heavens. And so I want to go to Genesis 2 and let's look up when they were actually created. In Genesis 1, 6, God said, let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters. And here we have this word for water, uh, hamaim. And here we have the word for waters, Mayim, and he says, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So what God is doing is God is taking the waters that's there on the earth. Remember in the very beginning, the earth, whole earth was covered with water. It was formless and void, but there was just water. The Holy Spirit was hovering over the deep, over the waters. And so what God does, he takes the waters and he begins to separate them, in which we can see what we now come to understand and see as the atmosphere. Let's go back to it. He says that verse seven, and God made the expanse and separated the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse. And it was so, and God called the expanse heaven. And there's that word heaven, where we see the word shamaim. Remember the word water is maim, and the word for heaven is shamaim. And so God called this separation heavens. And so understand we've got water, not just the physical water, we've got this, this this expanse. We've got this waters that we call our atmosphere. And then above that, this other level we call outer space. And so those are the first two layers of heaven or the first two heavens. And so to kind of even get another understanding, another scripture to kind of go along with this, if we look at Genesis chapter six, verse seven, forgetting the context of it, but just how the word is used here in seven, he says, so the Lord said, I will blot out man whom I have created on the face of the land, man and animals and creeping things and birds of the, here's that word, heavens, the word hashamayim, that is the birds of the sky, for I am sorry that I have made them. And so this word for heavens, this one indicates the first heaven, which is the sky. But then the Bible also talks about this second heaven as well. And there are more scriptures other than the ones that I'm just pulling up. But just to give you an idea, the second heaven that's pulled, that's, that's covered in the scriptures is in Deuteronomy 4.19, where it says, And beware lest you raise your eye to heaven, and when you see the sun and the moon and the stars, all the hosts of heaven will be drawn away and bow down to them. Now, the, the whole point here is, uh, the heavens that he's speaking of, the host of heavens is speaking of, and that's the same word again, Hashamayim is the second heaven, outer space, where we have the sun, the moon, stars, and other celestial bodies, and so forth. And so now we've got the first heaven, the second heaven. Most folks can understand that. Then we've got this third heaven, the abode of God. We see that in Psalm 148. I'm sorry, yeah, 148.4. He says, praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. And so this highest heaven, you highest heaven, this is referring to the same word that's used though, Hashamayim, the same word, this is referring to the third heaven. Now, there are passages in the Bible that refer to the third heaven as well. As a matter of fact, the Bible, Paul tells us if we didn't, if this wasn't enough, Paul lets us know that there is a third heaven. Why do we say that? Because Paul in 2 Corinthians Chapter 12 says that he went to the third heaven. Let's go to it. He says, verse two, for I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Now, the word heaven here in the Greek is the word uranu, which is oranas, um, which is the word for heaven. Interestingly enough, it is also used for the word sky, just like the Hebrew word. 
And so it can be used to mention the third one or the first two. In this case, Paul literally mentions the third heaven. Now, he doesn't say if he went in, in bodily form or in a vision, but the point is he mentions a third heaven. Now, there's something interesting to note about the heavens, all three of them. Obviously, mankind lives in the first heaven, this atmosphere that we breathe in with this air, this oxygen. But then we also have seen some men who have traveled to the second heaven. Interestingly enough, science has verified that there is trace amounts of water in the atmosphere, obviously, in the, or in the heavens, in outer space, not enough to at least just normally sustain life, not like we have here in this, the first heaven, but that's interesting enough to note. But the third heaven, Jesus makes a statement that we don't think about really until he makes a statement. He says in John chapter three, he states that verse 12, he says, I have told you earthly things and you do not believe. How then can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? And look what he says. No one has ascended into heaven. No one has ascended. And by the way, it is the definite article. So no one has, in, has ascended into the heaven. So he's speaking literally of the third heaven. No one has ascended into the heaven or into heaven, except he says, he who descended from heaven, that is the son of man. So obviously we only know of one person that is descended from heaven, which is Jesus. But he makes a statement that no one has ascended into the heaven. No one has ascended into heaven. But wait a second. What about Enoch? What about Elijah? Well, again, since we're using the word for heaven that's also used of sky, then it could probably make sense that they weren't taken into heaven. Jesus was not incorrect. Jesus is simply stating that only he has gone. As for Elijah and Enoch, let's go to 2 Kings and let's look at it. 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 1, it says, Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven, and the word that's used here is the plural, Hashemayim, he's taken up into heaven by a world when Elijah and Elijah were on their way. So, the point is that here we see Elijah taking up the same thing with Enoch. The Bible says that Enoch walked with God, but it just simply means that he was taken away. As a matter of fact, let's go and look at the at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5. He says that by faith, Enoch was taken up so that he should not see death. And he was not found because God had taken him. And the word used for taken just simply means that he is no longer uh, or he has been removed. And so Enoch was taken, but it never indicates that he was taken into the third heaven, nor does it ever indicate that Elijah was taken into the third heaven. And further validation of that is that Jesus makes a statement that no one has ascended. Now, after Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, and then his ultimate ascension, now we've got people who have gone there, but they didn't precede Jesus. And so kind of interesting. And so one very important fact to note about heaven. Notice that by faith, Enoch pleased God. Now, where is Enoch now? He's certainly in the third heaven. Where are the other people who by faith have pleased God? They are in the third heaven. You cannot make it to the third heaven, even though we kind of speak metaphorically. Uh, God has to speak to us kind of in his anthropomorphic language, which is he speaks to us in the ways that we can understand it. And so he might use figures of speech. And so when we talk about looking up to heaven, we're just saying kind of metaphorically looking up to God, even though no matter how high you go, I don't care how great the rocket ship is, how much fuel you have, you'll never go high enough, far enough, long enough to reach heaven. There is one way to get there, though, and that is by faith, placing your faith in what Christ has done, whom came down from heaven, died on the cross, then after his death, burial, resurrection, ascended back into heaven and then has made it possible for the rest of us to go there, how? By faith. And so if you ever want to go to the third heaven, the only way to get there is not by a long walk, not by a ship, only by faith. Amen.